From the 7,640 Philippine Islands, to Fort St. John, British Columbia. This is Exitu, thriving in our new buy-in. My name is uh, Marlita Ryder. I first came here in Fort St. John back in February 1999. I lived in Marikina City, Philippines, and I was living with my parents and I was unemployed that time. I have a bachelor's degree in business management and uh, I thought if I finish this program I, I could land in a job to work in a high-end fashion boutique in Makati and after that I was able to work in a jewelry store in Mega Mall and um, after that uh, employment I got to do a different type of job which, uh, which is closer to my home which is a merchandising company and you know those kind of jobs uh, I felt like it didn't really give me any uh, progress at all. I need to do something more and of course in the Philippines there's so many opportunities but uh, there's so many competencies as well you know with regards to looking for a job because um, there are requirements that you need to meet but some some requirements I do not meet so then I prayed God what what, what should I do so I prayed to him I asked him Lord please guide me and help me at the back of my mind keep telling me try Canada why not try Canada but I was thinking how when I don't have any much resources well how will I do that how can I do that I have circumstance, that particular circumstance in my life that happened led me to anxiety and depression. But you know what? Um, I have my prayer, I have my family and friends that kind of help me back up and uh, bounce back. And I was able to realize that, uh, okay, this is not what I the life that I want. I want a new one. I want to start a new life. And the idea to, in coming to Canada is, is too impossible for me at the time. In the first place, I don't have any skills or money at all. But, um, you know, God was really good. He, he has been working. He provided the finances for my schooling, for my training. And I was able to go to school, I was able to train as a caregiver. And uh, back then, back in the early 90s, the living caregiver program was really uh, in demand in Canada, you know. And even in the Philippines and the training centers, you can find in, uh, training centers in many different parts of Manila. To come to Canada, I had to look for an employer. So I had to find out how to 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 get these employers come to me or reach me and um, we were lucky enough because the school had provided some insights how to getting some employer and uh, find our place here in Canada and uh, I was just uh, so blessed because I was one of the, the shortlisted candidate that has been chosen with this agency here in Canada. Then, of course, being shortlisted, the employer had to choose which one here, which, which of the shortlisted one that they, they want to sponsor. So, luckily, I was the one who got the job offer. It's so exciting because, you know, of all the candidates, I was the one who got 
chosen. So that was the start of my journey coming here to Canada. It's a bit, you know, a mixed emotion, of course. There are tears, there are laughters, but mostly, mostly uh, laughter because the prayers had been answered. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so excited to go. And oh, as, as the time goes longer, I realized, oh man, I'm going to be missing my family. I'm going to miss my mom, my, my tatay, my nanay, which, you know, they are aging. They, they will need me. But, of course, this is a new chapter in my life. And uh, I had to face it because I have my own, my own life that I chose. And I'm thankful because the, this has been my my dream to come to Canada. February 1999, it was a um, winter month. So, well, it's not as, as uh, cold as it is today. Back then, I think it was only minus five when I arrived. Of course, coming from tropical country, I thought I was in the big freezer, you know, big freezer and when I arrived in Fort St. John I thought it's a very small city it's such quiet it's such a quiet small town compared to the streets of Manila or Marikina where you know you can see people walking around you can remember I think there were only you can number them by your hands maybe around 20 to 30 Filipinos uh, back in 1999. Then I saw this lady and I thought she looks like a Korean, but no, she was a Filipina. So we started chatting, talking, and, uh, and um, that's the start to have a connection through kind of like, it's like a domino effect, right? So we met someone that you know, your own, that you speak your language. And I was able, I was so so happy that I was able to speak my own language at the time because when I arrived I just speak totally English and of course you know we a Filipino is an um, this is our second language so it's kind of hard for me that time so because of course uh, Filipinos loves to gather loves to party and loves to enjoy our food so that's how it started <laughs> Honestly, there wasn't any Filipino um, when it comes to go shopping. We need to go to a bigger city to get those uh, foods, to get the foods that I'm craving for. But some of the challenges as well, as well when, when I our first time I arrived here in Fort St. John is the weather. Of course, everyone knows. We're not used to this kind of weather. So the tendency that time is I always get a headache because I'm not used to it. No? So so I, I, I just stayed home because it's winter time. That's why. That's why it's month of February, March, April. It's still kind of my, my body does not like it. I kept, I kept, oh, I, I think I always have, I felt like I always going to get sick because I have a headache. This a rice because some groceries here um, sell some rice that the staples in the Philippines, the one that we used to eat, and you know. But that time we just improvised, and of course, um, if you went with a Filipino party, you know, sometimes they try to kind of offer you, you know, the food, Filipino foods, the normal Filipino foods, because they they are they were here already, so. They know where to get those uh, stocks and uh, yeah, that's part of the challenge. Well, everyone, um, everyone has a big dream, you know, even every one of us, every immigrant, every Filipino or any other nationalities. For me is 
to get some Canadian, some Canadian education. It's so one of my dream, and upgrade my skills, and see until where I can reach my capacity, you know, and I think I have achieved that dream. However, you know, even if you achieve it, you don't stop there. You have to climb up more, step one step at a time. I, sh I should say that my contribution to Canada has been very valuable and uh, relevant because as an immigrant, I always wanted to have something new to the table. I, I want something to offer in the table. So I want to, to be somebody and I want that contribution to be a legacy for the next, for the next gen Filipino generation to come. It's easier for us now, easier for the newcomer to get what they want, especially not only Filipino, Filipino um, nationalities, even in other Asian countries, you know. In the groceries, you can see this aisle with different, you know, specifically Asian food, international food, something like that. And uh, I think most of the groceries here now in town offer that kind of, uh, of uh, service and also um, we used to have uh, only um, restaurant that caters for Western food right but at this time here in Fort St. John we already have a Filipino owned uh, restaurant where he provides and uh, serve you know some authentic Filipino cuisine and of course with a combination of uh, western food so yeah in terms of, uh, of 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 services with uh you know to service the filipino community you know i think um, it it has improved over the years and yeah and i'm happy about that i don't need to travel to our neighboring province to get this stuff because it's already available here. When you come to a different country, you need to be able to, to have a certain something inside you, skills that you want to, as we mentioned earlier, the thing that we can contribute. Because, of course, we are a people that wants to help all the time or wants to share something to other people all the time. So. Me, I, I work from home. I work here because because by the time I have little kids, my kids are little and they need me. They they need my attention. So I decided to have, uh, since I have this skill, I decided to open up a sewing and alteration business. And my concentration is doing some bridles, prom, prom dresses, and some other formal dresses because... It's a small city and nobody, no one, not too many people are doing this kind of job. So I thought maybe if I can do it at home, I can be working and at the same time earning and at the same time I'll be with my kids. I became a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. I did my schooling back in 2013 and I got my license in on the late part of 2016. As an RCIC, uh, I'm, I am a member of College of Immigration and Citizenship Consultant. So being a licensed immigration consultant, um, I can give an ethical advice to, to, uh, to those who want to come to Canada. And I am humbled to say that um, I had helped many families who came under the Living Caregiver Program, like me. And, um, and eventually they brought their families here in Canada too. And I was also glad to see that some, some uh, family here was able to reunite with their grandparents to see and establish a relationship with their grandkids 
and uh, I'm so happy to say that uh, I got to 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 see some student who got accepted to their college program. I'm pretty happy and um, blessed that that through this uh, thing that I have, I was able to you know um, to kind of express myself. There are certain freedoms and abilities that um, that now I enjoy. There are big differences uh, actually when it comes to freedom and abilities compared to our home country, Philippines. And uh, there are more opportunities here in Canada actually. I was able to go back to school. At my age, I was able to go back to school and even if it is done online, um, and it does not matter how old you are, where you came from, as long as you can, you know, you can interpret yourself. And I don't think I have that in the Philippines. I don't think I feel that there. And um, I got to pursue my dream to help people to come to Canada and fulfill their dreams as well. And by becoming a licensed immigration consultant, I was able to to do this and I don't I can't do it in the Philippines there there wasn't any opportunity like this in the Philippines so I I feel that Canada has given me an opportunity to do this thing and be be more productive and be myself what I can advise to the new incoming immigrants is to be patient uh, stay focused on your goals. Try to adapt to the Canadian culture. Try to discover and develop um, your other hidden skills that you brought here. Be an active participant in any community events. Uh, be involved in your local church or school and if possible do some volunteering in the community. Um, through this, you will find some connections, connections that will help you in the future. Well, I think as an immigrant myself, we can do more things productively by being an active member of the community and uh, have the spirit of what you call bayanihan, it's a Tagalog word for kind of like coming along together, come together and help out one another. Teach the next generation, you know. And it's important. It's important for us as an immigrant here in Port St. John to be able not only to be known as a, as a good worker, but we, we are... We are uh, people with good heart, with a servant heart, and ready to, to help out in whatever manner, in whatever way. I think at this point in my life, at my age, I have achieved the dream that, um, that you know, that everyone desires. I have a family, my husband, my kids, my grandkids, you know, I think I have come to that point that I have achieved my Canadian dream. <laughs>